Good morning, everybody. We have Titanes and Jay with us today. We are going to say hello, good morning, Titanes. Hi. And Jay, how are you? Hi there. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, it's April 15. It's April 15. Uh oh, what happened there? Okay, April 15, 29 day, 2019. It's Monday. It is tax day. <laughs> So don't forget to file your taxes, those of you who haven't filed your taxes. But anyway, today is Monday of Holy Week. And you got to forgive me, I have this little um, throat uh, issue. But anyway, we will go ahead and do the commentary. Yeah. Oh, hi, Tita Gigi. Good evening in the Philippines. Tita Gigi. Calero. Oh. Yeah. See. Tita Gigi. Yeah, okay. Today we are going to hear from the Gospel of St. John. It's still the Gospel of St. John. Chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. This, and this is the story about how Jesus went to visit Lazarus and for the sisters of Lazarus. Mary and Martha, right? Mary and Martha. Okay. And our Lord has just has just risen Lazarus from the dead. Mm -hmm. He had just performed that miracle of Lazarus uh, coming back from the dead. So uh, then Jesus went to visit. This is just really a few days before the uh, crucifixion and death of our Lord. So plenty of Jews were in the house of Mary and Martha and Lazarus because they wanted to see uh, Lazarus who mm -hmm. you know just rose from the dead. So they were all eager, you know, they were all nosy and trying to find out, oh, oh, we wonder how Lazarus was or is now. So they were all there, congregating there. Anyway, and, uh, and uh, Mary, Mary took a litter of very expensive perfume and she decides to bathe the feet of Jesus with the perfume. Okay, And then... And then, so the, the smell of perfume really uh, went all over the house and it was very fragrant. And then there was Judas Iscariot. There was Judas. Judas was one of the 12, 12 apostles. Okay? And in this particular gospel, St. <laughs> John reveals to us the, the chore that, that uh, the apostle Judas had among among the twelve, see, just like all of us have chores to do at home, okay? the uh, the brotherhood that Jesus put up together, the disciples, the apostles, they also had their own chores. Hi, Eva. So Judas, what was the chores? What was the chore of Judas? Does anybody know? Yes, yeah, very good, Joseph. He was the one. He was the money bag he was the treasurer he was the one carrying all the collections that people would give the the uh, the apostles he was the one carrying the uh, the bag and according to saint john judas would steal from the collection would steal money see so judas was not only bad because he betrayed jesus later see the problem of judas is that he was already bad from the time that he was, uh, you know, among the apostles. He was already committing some small sins. That is why all of the small sins of Judas, the stealing from the money bag, led to the bigger sin, which is to betray Jesus completely. Okay? So that was, that's the problem with sin. Okay? Sins do not... Big sins just do not happen all of a sudden, okay? The the uh, the, um, the the whole the <laughs> I'm a little confused this now this morning because of this throat that's irritating me. So bear with me. So the the way that big sins happen is because we do not take care of small things of the little things. We are not avoiding the temptation to commit the smaller sins. So, 
Small things, small sins lead up to the commission of bigger sins. That is why, that is why venial sin is important for us to avoid at all costs. Okay? Venial sins are the smaller sins that could dispose, predispose us to commit bigger sins. So if we want to avoid big sins, mortal sins, we better put a lot of effort to try to avoid even the smallest sins, which are venial sins. And if we want to avoid committing venial sins, we also have to try our best to avoid imperfections. Okay? Imperfections are not really sins. They are just things that we don't do as well as we should be. Okay? Oh, God bless you. We should also try to avoid committing omissions. Okay? Not only sins of commission, but also sins of omission. Those that, you know, we could have done good at, thing, good things that we could have done, but we, which we withheld and did not perform and did not do. Okay? Those are also not good. That's what you call omissions. So, if we want to avoid mortal sins, we have to put plenty of effort to avoid venial sins. And if we want to avoid venial sins, we have to also put an effort to avoid imperfections. Okay? So, the sin of, the sin of, uh, of Judas, to betraying, that of betraying Jesus, which we're going to witness around when this week? Thursday. Holy Thursday, right? Holy Thursday after the agony in the garden. Okay? That big sin of betrayal did not happen all of a sudden. As St. John reveals to us, Judas was already a thief. Judas was already stealing from the money bag. See? When uh, he was the one in charge of, of, the, uh, of the bag. Now, besides, besides this tendency okay, of stealing, Judas was also a liar. He was also a liar. Okay? He was, and, and, and St. John tells us right here, see? Uh, what did Judas say? Why was this oil not sold for 300 days wages and given to the poor? See? Why, why, why are you spending all of this precious, <coughs> precious uh, um, oil on just washing the feet of Jesus? You could, have, you could have sold that and you could have done more good by spreading uh, you know, the, the, the cost of the purchase or sale of that uh, perfume and you could have spread it around to poor people. Right? Isn't that a good idea? What do you think? Couldn't that have been a better idea? Instead of spending so much uh, precious perfume on just washing feet. Uh, couldn't it have been a better idea? Yeah, sell it and then whatever you earn from it, give it to the poor. You would have done more good, don't you think? Huh? This looks like a brilliant idea, don't you think? Okay, the trouble is that it's a lie. It's a lie. Well, that is the kind of lie that the social liberal socialists would tell you. You know, uh, let's give it to the poor. But really, really, eh, what Judas wanted to do was, since he knew that if you sell it, the money would go to that bag and he will be the one to steal from it, then his seemingly good idea was actually a cover-up for his own lies. See? His own lies. So it's it's it is a lie. His his seeming good intention of wanting to sell the perfume to make money out of it so that he can give it to the poor is a lie. He was try he was going to use it in order to cover up his own bad intentions. Now you see that is the epitome of a lie. When we tell lies no matter how small or big, it is normally a cover-up for, a cover-up, right? For other things that either we did or we didn't do good. That is what a lie is all about. <coughs> and when we tell a lie, the, in all appearances, the lie appears to be good. See? In fact, 
the lie is wrapped that way in order to make us look good. See? So Judas will look good among others. Oh, I'm concerned for the poor. Right? I have a good intention. See? That is exactly what a lie is all about. That is why we have to avoid lying at all costs. We have to avoid lying at all costs. Because just like Judas, who betrayed Jesus with a lie, Okay? When we tell a lie, we are also betraying Jesus. Why? Because Jesus already said in the last Gospels that we, that we already commented on, I am the way, continue, the truth, and the life. So when we tell a lie, we are betraying the truth. Who is Jesus? We are acting like Judas. You see? We are acting like Judas every time we tell a lie. We are betraying the truth himself, who is Jesus. Okay? Because a lie is, is exactly that. It is the betrayal of the truth. So that is why a lie is very, very bad. And we have to avoid, avoid it at all costs. Okay? And by the way, what is a lie in violation of? What is the commandment? That we violate every time we tell a lie. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Which commandment? Huh? What? Jacob? What is that? The eighth commandment, which is? Please recite the eighth commandment. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Okay? Now, of course, that's the general uh, prescription. But under that, Commandment are plenty of other little uh, uh, substrates of lies. Okay, there is there is uh, hypocrisy, for example. There is disrespect for for the reputation and honor of, of somebody else. There is uh, um, duplicity. You know, you're, if you're a hypocrite, or a, you, there's duplicity. You're two faced. Sometimes you're goody goody here, and then when you turn around, you do bad things or you tell a lie okay? there's also the lie of detraction okay or calumny when you malign or or say bad things about other people which may not be a lie but it is also a lie because you are destroying the reputation of, of people okay? <coughs> so all of those things are all part of the eighth commandment and all of that is a big big no-no Eh? Because you will be betraying the truth who is Jesus Christ. And you'll be acting like another Judas. So today is a good day to examine how we fulfill the Eighth Commandment. How we subscribe to the truth all the time. It is a good day for us to make a resolution to stop lying. Eh? If ever we have that habit, to stop lying. And to make a resolution to always, always tell the truth. Okay? And it will be a very good day. We are at the home stretch of Lent. It's a very good day for us to intensify all of our mortifications. All of the things that we offer up. All of the good deeds that we made a resolution to do better off in this time of Lent. We are on the home stretch, folks. So this is a very good day to renew our resolutions and to tell our Lord we're going to do more these coming days leading up to Good Friday. Okay? And do it all with a smile. Okay, have a good day, everybody. We're off to Mass now. Let's run. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.